Good evening. It's Monday, April 20th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi, and we are broadcasting remotely tonight. Calls are growing for the country to reopen. While state, county, and city officials are starting to talk about what that will look like, they aren't in any rush. Today, San Diego County health officials announced there are now 72 deaths and more than 2,300 cases of coronavirus. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowen has the latest, including efforts by the state to help disadvantaged students keep learning. About one in five students in California lacks either high-speed Internet access or a computer that would enable distance learning. Governor Gavin Newsom's partner, Jennifer Zebel Newsom, is leading an effort to gather donations from companies and philanthropists to close that so-called digital divide. Today, she announced 70,000 laptops and tablets will be shipped to students across the state starting this week. We all know that education is fundamental to opportunity. And so our mission will not end until every child in California has what they need to continue learning while physically distanced. This pandemic should not stand in the way of California students reaching their potential and realizing their dreams. San Diego County continues to make progress on limiting the spread of COVID-19. And County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says mayors of coastal cities are now discussing when and how they can reopen beaches. When it comes to beach and water sports and activities, we have uh, not all of the mayors are in agreement. Uh, some of them would like us to move more aggressively. Some of them would, would like us to exercise more caution. But one universal thread that we've heard consistently across mayors is they would like a regional standard. Uh, they would like all of the jurisdictions to generally adhere to one set of, of requirements. Fletcher says coastal mayors are working on a plan for reopening beaches that they'll present to the county for consideration. But he also made clear while the virus is now spreading more slowly, that doesn't mean things will quickly return to normal. That would be like throwing away your umbrella in the middle of a rainstorm because you haven't been getting wet. The reason we see progress to date is because of the actions we've taken. For a broader reopening of the county and state, officials say they need to significantly ramp up testing so new coronavirus infections can quickly be identified and patients isolated. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. Just moments ago, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner announced a limited reopening of neighborhood parks. Starting tomorrow, some parks will be open for exercise. Social distancing rules must still be followed. Parking lots and basketball courts will remain closed. Late last month, all parks and beaches were closed because of too many gatherings. Beaches, boardwalks, and trails are still closed for now. And the mayor says city parks could completely shut down again if social distancing rules are not followed. It's a famous saying. Give me liberty or give me death. And many San Diegans and others across the nation are demanding liberty and the reopening of not only our beaches, but the economy. While on the other hand, some say such a move could lead to more death. Here's KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman. What we saw this weekend was complete ignorance. No kind of social distancing, no kind of respect of public health orders, social distancing, and wearing masks. Shane Harris of the People's Alliance for Justice wants to know why San Diego police and the Sheriff's Department did not ticket protesters this weekend. Why could we at least have held those attending the protest accountable for social distancing? More than 100 people turned out in downtown San Diego on Saturday protesting California's stay-at-home order meant to slow the spread of the coronavirus. A similar rally was held Sunday in Encinitas. Some did not seem to be protesting restrictions, but rather showing their support to re-elect President Trump. It's important to note that only a few hundred out of the county's 3.3 million residents were protesting. Health officials have banned public gatherings and imposed social distancing restrictions, which were largely ignored by the protesters. We're asking that they would be issued citations for these public health gatherings that put the public health and safety of many at risk in our county. Harris believes many of the protesters benefited from white privilege. Because if African Americans and Latinos wanted to gather, would the protest have looked different? I believe it would. 
San Diego police strongly refute that, saying they would not have cited anyone protesting. But SDPD and the Sheriff's Department have cited other San Diegans for violating health orders. Both agencies issued a joint statement today, saying, in part, even though no citations were issued, prosecution for the rally's organizer could be sought. I think you're seeing a growing uh, frustration throughout all of San Diego County of how uh, inconsistently these orders have been applied. And been Meantime, Coronado Mayor Richard Bailey is calling for restrictions on certain outdoor activities to be lifted. How come if I'm proper socially distancing on the sidewalk, uh, that's okay, but if I'm kayaking the bay, that's illegal. County health officials Monday discussed easing restrictions. They say it's still too early right now, but they're working with local mayors to come up with a regional plan to restore at least partial access to beach, parks, and trails in the coming weeks. Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. And protests against stay-at-home orders have also popped up in other cities across the U.S. But governors say testing hurdles are creating challenges to easing those restrictions. Whitney Wild has the latest from Washington. Small groups of protesters are taking to the streets in some U.S. cities, demanding an end to stay-at-home measures. These policies are destroying this economy. A new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll suggests nearly 60 percent of Americans worry lifting restrictions too soon could make the pandemic worse. But these small groups of protesters have garnered support from the president. People feel that way. You're allowed to protest. Governors, meanwhile, are weighing competing guidance from public health experts and businesses on when and how to open up their state's economies. You don't need protests to convince anyone in this country that we have to get back to work. The question we all have to face is, what's the reality? If, if we go too quickly, uh, this could be unsafe for people. Making that more difficult, state officials say they don't have the supplies for widespread testing, a critical part of sending Americans back to work. More help is needed from the federal government on testing. We simply have not had enough test kits. We governors are doing the best we can with what we've got. On Capitol Hill, negotiations are underway on a new nearly $500 billion spending package to fund small business loans, hospitals, and more testing. Lawmakers now under pressure while some Americans grow restless in limbo. In Washington, Whitney Wild, KPBS News. Starting today, San Diego Zoo Global is furloughing some staff as the parks remain closed. Workers who provide essential care for wildlife and maintaining core functions at the San Diego Zoo and Safari Park will not be furloughed. Local congressional representatives have asked federal leaders to include the zoo in the next round of stimulus relief. The zoo's economic impact is $1.7 billion annually, employing 3,000 Californians. Donations are also being accepted to help feed and care for all of the animals. Another food distribution effort today, this time to help feed our heroes who serve in the military. Feeding San Diego is addressing the growing needs of these families, especially during the pandemic, by expanding its Feeding Heroes programs. Today at Dewey Elementary, 200 families picked up prepackaged and prepared meals. We already operate a school pantry at Dewey Elementary School with a twice a month food distribution for military families. But because the school is closed, we've had to switch to this drive through distribution of ready to eat meals that are being served for the youth, as well as a box of healthy, fresh food products for the whole family. And in total, more than a million veterans, active duty military and their dependents live in San Diego. That number is expected to grow in the next three years as five more ships home port here. Feeding San Diego has also partnered with Armed Services YMCA to further increase hunger relief services. Through the Feeding Heroes program, 2.3 million meals are served to military and veteran families each year. San Diego scientists have uncovered over a dozen potential drug therapies to stop the spread of coronavirus. KPBS science and technology reporter Shalina Chetlani says the discovery is a first step toward developing a treatment. So this is the high containment lab uh, that uses the virus. At the Sanford Burnham Previs Medical Discovery Institute, virologist Suma Chunda shows off his lab where scientists are testing out drugs on live strains of the coronavirus. They can spend about three uh, three hours in there. They're, they're in a negative pressure environment. They get uh, dehydrated pretty quickly. This facility is built with the negative pressure to ensure any materials inside don't leak outside. 
At this lab and others across San Diego and the world, Chunda and his team have tested over 12,000 drug therapies that are either FDA approved or in clinical trial. And 30 of them could stop the spread of coronavirus in cells in a lab setting. This is a first step, right? We have 30 more rays of sunshine poking through right now that could be uh, potential cures, right? But uh, uh, until and unless we are able to go through clinical investigation and have uh, uh, case control studies, there's no need to really for the public to go out and try to um, either ask their doctors or, 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 or try, to, try to hoard any of these medications. The drugs scientists tested out span a range of types. Some of them weren't, weren't it, went into clinical trials uh, for things like Crohn's disease, for things like lymphoma. Um, I mean, they just ran, run the gamut. Uh, hypertension, there were a, a number of anti-malarial drugs. Chenda says the virus takes over multiple proteins in the body. So most likely, treating patients will require a cocktail of different drugs. And the study suggests several may pan out. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. Some of the hardest hit places during this pandemic, nursing homes and assisted living facilities. And as KPBS's Amita Sharma reports, they are now asking Governor Gavin Newsom for protection. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities are joining hospitals and asking Governor Newsom to grant them immunity from prosecution and lawsuits during the, quote, current COVID-19 state of emergency. The immunity would cover all acts, administrative, civil, and criminal. The industry groups say such protection will be, quote, adequate for care providers to save Californians' lives. But Pat McGinnis, who heads California Advocates for Nursing Home Reform, says what the groups are really asking for is a blank check that would result in dangerous consequences. One of the many problems we have with this is that what it would do basically is excuse uh, elder abuse. We worked long and hard to get the elder abuse laws established in California. We also know that thus far, Residents have absolutely no rights. McGinnis went on to say the immunity request comes at a time when staffing requirements have been suspended and no visitors are allowed. This not only includes families, but also the state's long-term care ombudsman and inspectors. Amitha Sharma, KPBS News. And the governor's office has not responded to KPBS's request for comment. We're following all of the latest coronavirus developments for you at kpbs.org. Click on the tracking COVID-19 link on our homepage and you'll be taken to a page with all of our recent reports. You can find that right now at kpbs.org. There's a chance we could get some more rain before things heat up heading into the weekend. Mark Mancuso has your forecast. Well, another storm system moving through Southern California. With that, we'll see gusty winds and a strong onshore flow with low clouds tonight into parts of tomorrow. But after that, that onshore flow weekends, and we'll see a nice warm up Wednesday. And by uh, the weekend, oh, it does look like it's going to get hot. So as we take a look at our weather today, we've seen this trough move through. The, the wind's picking up. Uh, lots of clouds at the coast and just a couple of spotty showers with that. For tonight, plenty of clouds, uh, Oceanside over Escondido, El Cajon, uh, Brego Springs uh, near 60 tonight, Mount Laguna around 44. Future cast uh, really doesn't show much precipitation. There may be a shower in spots uh, uh, in some of the mountains, but the main story, the low clouds around tonight and through a good part of the day tomorrow, perhaps getting a little bit brighter by the afternoon. And it's going to be breezy, too. Looking at Tuesday's weather, uh, well, we'll see gusty winds as this trough moves through. And as it moves out, that will allow for temperatures to start to creep up. Temperatures here, 69 in Oceanside. Uh, San Diego hits 70. Borrego Springs warms to 87 in Mount Laguna, 56. Now, as we go to the upper atmosphere, here's that trough moving through today. And after that moves up, ridge of high pressure builds in. That will bring us the offshore flow, the warming into Wednesday, and then stronger high pressure builds towards the weekend, and that's when we'll see temperatures soar. So there's going to be a nice little warming trend on the way here. Wednesday into Saturday, you know, it looks like uh, temperatures will be getting well above average. So as we take you to the coast, you can see how the temperatures will be rising to the upper 70s later this week. As we take you into the inland areas, 
We'll be looking at a warm up into the mid and upper 80s. And as we head to the mountains, it looks beautiful here with plenty of sunshine. And the deserts will be getting close to 100 degrees. For KPBS, I'm meteorologist Mark Mincuso. The Navy and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are investigating the coronavirus outbreak aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Nearly 700 crew members aboard the San Diego-based aircraft carrier have tested positive for the virus. One sailor has died. The investigation will look into to establish the origin of the outbreak and understand how it spread. And the former captain of the USS Roosevelt has become something of a folk hero after his letter became public, which urged the Navy to take stronger action against an outbreak of the coronavirus. KPBS military reporter Steve Walsh says friends and former shipmates are publicly standing by Brett Crozier. We are T.R. Strong. More than two weeks after Brett Crozer was relieved of command of the USS Roosevelt, videos continue to appear online demonstrating support for the captain. In two days, military spouse Chelsea Wooter's video received over 8,000 views on Facebook. The video mixes pictures of the crew cheering for Crozer as he left the Roosevelt with well wishes from the families of the crew. Wooters is in San Diego. Her husband is on the carrier. They continue to support a captain who only took command in November. Now that's how you feel now, one of the greatest captains you ever had. He understood the value of his crew. He understood that they have families too, just like him. He understood the magnitude of the spiraling of the virus and that it was no longer at a point that they could control with all the steps that they were already taking. Okay, thank you all for being here today. The acting secretary of the Navy, Thomas Modley, abruptly fired Crozer April 2nd, after the captain's letter was leaked to the San Francisco Chronicle. Modley then resigned after flying to Guam to give a rambling 15-minute speech over the carrier's loudspeaker, which was itself leaked. If he didn't think, it was my opinion, that if he didn't think that information was, to, was gonna get out into the public, in this information age that we live in, that he was A, too naive or too stupid to be the commanding officer of a ship like this. More than 12 percent of the more than 4,800 crew members have since tested positive for the virus, the largest outbreak in the U.S. military. Most of the crew has been moved to quarters in Guam while their carrier undergoes a deep cleaning. Mark Ganey met Brett Crozer in middle school in Santa Rosa, California. His high school classmates have posted their own show of support. He saw that something needed to be done to, to save the lives of, of his sailors, which I know he took extremely seriously. Um, and that's very consistent with, with who Brett is. He's, he's going to do the right thing. It was that moral fiber that I saw glimpses of uh, when, when, when we were just uh, 16, 17, 18 years old. Ganey says Crozer, like a number of naval aviators of his generation, was inspired by Top Gun. He graduated from the Naval Academy in 1992. Initially, he was assigned to pilot helicopters instead of jets, but eventually he made his way to F-18s. That in and of itself was a rare move, says his Academy classmate, Jerry Darren. And unless you have an absolutely stellar reputation, um, not just as an aviator, but as an officer, um, they won't even consider uh, to allow you to transfer. By the time he took command of the Roosevelt, Crozer was among a rare breed. Aircraft carriers are the only ship routinely commanded by naval aviators, a painstaking career path that sends pilots back to school to learn nuclear power, then out to sea again to experience running a ship. Darren says Crozer, like other carrier captains, is the ultimate team player. He's just a genuine person. You know, he's not a flashy, in-your-face kind of guy. Um, He's a loyal, he's a very loyal person, you know, to the Navy, to his crew. Crozer laid out his philosophy for the upcoming deployment in an interview with the ship's public affairs. Around the same time, he took command of the USS Roosevelt. And I look forward to serving you as your commanding officer uh, during that time. My job is to make your job easier. Sailors on the Roosevelt say Crozer seemed like the only person taking their situation seriously. A sailor at Crozer's former command, the USS Blue Ridge, who did not want to be identified, says the captain would approach sailors on late night watch to ask how they were doing. Not everyone supports the captain. 
Some in San Diego's military community feel, like Modley, that Crozer violated the chain of command when he sent the letter that eventually leaked. One sailor aboard the Roosevelt has died. Crozer has tested positive for coronavirus. He has been reassigned and is scheduled to come back to San Diego. For KPBS News, I'm Steve Walsh. Starting today, all Walmart employees are required to wear facial coverings. The company says it is following the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommendation. Walmart is providing the coverings to workers once they pass health screenings and temperature checks. They can also wear their own mask. Walmart customers aren't required to cover their face, but it is encouraged. The coronavirus pandemic has forced theaters to close. Without being able to do live performances, theaters have had to find new ways to deliver content and find audiences. KPBS arts reporter Beth Accomando checks in with the Old Globe Theater to see how it's coping with current challenges. San Diego's Old Globe is no stranger to adversity. Its theater burned to the ground in 1978, but rose from the ashes to open again. And its namesake, Shakespeare's Globe Theater, faced closure because of the Black Death, says artistic director Barry Edelstein. I've been turning to Shakespeare a lot, and uh, not just because the writing is so glorious and beautiful and, and uplifting and, and happy making, but also because he's a theater artist who knew what it was like to have his theater shut down by disease. It happened multiple times during Shakespeare's career. And you know what? The theater's always reopened. But unlike the original Globe Theater, the one in San Diego has technology at its disposal to put programming online while the theater itself is shuttered. So very quickly, the Globe put up arts engagement programs, like Behind the Curtain, artistic output with act breaks, and humanities programming like its online book club. But not every theater company has a Shakespearean scholar in-house. But Edelstein is one and he's offering an online version of his Thinking Shakespeare, demonstrating how to bring Shakespeare's language to life by looking to his sonnets. Sonnet 29, we're gonna go one line at a time, we're gonna hit the verbs, we're gonna use the antitheses, we're gonna find that simile at the end. These are all programs run by the Old Globe, but the theater is also participating in a nationwide program called Play at Home to commission playwrights to create 10-minute plays. These are not plays that would ever be produced. And in fact, the instructions to the playwrights were, don't worry about having it produced. So if you want suddenly 15 unicorns to come running through, do it. So set a courtroom in the jungle and, and have some of the animals not just uh, exhibit humanistic behaviors, but also animalistic behaviors, you know. So uh, that's what I did. Playwright Gil Sotu came up with the terrible case of Miss Locks. All right, so what it's about is a uh, baby bear is put on trial uh, because he attacked and ultimately killed Goldilocks. Uh, she was intruding in the house, but she was an intruder, so that's what the trial is about, whether it was murder or whether it was just, you know, defending his home. His play, along with many others, can be downloaded for readings at home. But of course, we should give Shakespeare the last word here. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. And that this refers to Shakespeare's poetry in that case, but I I'm going to use it to refer to theater. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. I can't improve on Shakespeare, so... Beth Agamondo, KPBS News. Former First Lady Michelle Obama is partnering with PBS Kids for a weekly read-along show. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. It's terribly kind of you, Fox, but no, I'm going to have lunch with a Gruffalo. And she's reading one of her favorite children's books aloud at 9 a.m. our time every Monday. Today's book was The Gruffalo. You can find it on PBS Kids' Facebook page and YouTube channel. With information on the pandemic constantly changing, it can be hard to tell fact from fiction. So world health officials are busting some of the most popular myths about the virus. Mandy Gaither has more. 
According to the World Health Organization, the new coronavirus doesn't travel through 5G mobile networks. Even countries without 5G are seeing the virus spread. It goes from person to person through air droplets or from germs on contaminated surfaces that are touched and not washed off. You cannot prevent the new coronavirus by drinking alcohol, eating garlic, exposing yourself to the sun, taking a hot bath, using hand dryers or ultraviolet disinfection lamps. Spraying alcohol or chlorine on surfaces can disinfect them, but spraying those chemicals on your body won't kill any viruses that have already entered your body. COVID-19 can spread in any climate, hot and humid or in cold weather. Rinsing your nose with saline won't prevent infection, and antibiotics only kill bacteria, not viruses, so they won't work either. The new coronavirus cannot be transmitted through mosquito bites, and being able to hold your breath for 10 seconds or more without coughing or feeling discomfort does not mean you're COVID-19 free. Catching the coronavirus doesn't mean it'll stay with you for life. Most people who catch COVID-19 recover. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. An update now on our top story. This afternoon, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner announced a limited reopening of the city park starting tomorrow. Beaches will remain closed for now. Today, county health officials announced there are now 72 deaths and more than 2,300 cases of COVID-19. Governor Newsom said he'll give more details about a plan to relax stay-at-home rules throughout the state on Wednesday. And you can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maya Trabolsi. Stay safe and good night.